Hey, what's up guys? This is Anthony from Anthony's Customs, and for this review, we are going to be reviewing the new movie, TMNT, Out of the Shadows. So you guys should know that I am a Ninja Turtles fan. I grew up on it as a kid. I never read the comics for the Turtles. I'm somewhat familiar with them, but I grew up on the cartoon. Just so that you know my, my background a little bit. Um, I, kn I understand the cartoon was really corny, and a lot of people don't like it for that, and a lot of people like the comics because it was a lot darker, but uh, I've always been sort of an in-between type of thing as far as the story goes, so um, just that gives you a little bit of background. I did enjoy the first movie. I did. I want to be clear, I did. I don't think it was a great film by any means, but I enjoyed it. It was fun, and despite its flaws, I had a good time watching it, which I want to touch on that for just a second. You don't have to dislike a bad movie, and you don't have to like a good movie. There are plenty of really well-made movies that just don't do anything for me, and there's plenty of really poorly made movies that are a lot of fun. Uh, a quick example of that would be the Fast and Furious movies. I know the writing's bad, I know half of the acting's bad, but they're still a lot of fun to watch. Now, I've probably turned off a few people by saying that, but that's okay. Um, I also want to reference the X-Men movie, the one that just came out, as you guys know, I did not give that a very good review, and that is because despite the fact that it should have been really fun to watch, even though it had a lot of problems, it really wasn't. It, it was lacking a lot of the things we wanted as fans, and it didn't have the, the technical merits to back up the rest of the film, so I gave it a bad review. Now this movie, on the other hand, it's a little bit of a different story. Okay, and I want to point out before I go, this will have potential spoilers in it. I don't really know if there's much in this movie that can really be spoiled. If you've seen the previews, it's pretty straightforward, but just putting it out there, if you haven't seen the movie yet and you want to avoid spoilers, add this to your watch later list, come back after you've seen the movie, and we can talk about it in the comment section below. So going forward, spoilers are potential. This movie wasn't the best in many regards. It had some really bad writing. Some really bad writing in, in some scenes in particular. Where some Most scenes were fine, but some really dumb things that are just like, why? Why is that there? Happened in this movie, so that's not a good thing. And then a lot of the jokes were very much in line with the average Michael Bay movie in that they were jokes for little kids. Uh, and that's not really a good thing. I know this isn't meant to be a super serious movie, but that doesn't mean the jokes have to be senseless. And in this movie, nobody in the theater laughed, unless it was like a kid under five. Which, can I say just for a second, if your kids aren't old enough to speak, don't bring them to the theater. If they're going to be crying and screaming, you don't get to see the movies, unless you can find a babysitter. That's on you, it's not on everyone else. Stop doing that. Anyway, one kid even opened the emergency exit door in the middle of the film, and he was like, two. What kind of parents are... Anyway, let's get back to the movie. A lot of things like that. A lot of typical Michael Bay nonsense, didn't add anything, took away from the movie type of things. Not great at all. The plot's super basic. It's almost the same plot as the third Transformers movie, and I should say this movie feels exactly like they took the first Ninja Turtles movie and mixed it with Transformers. It's, it's very much in that vein, so you can go into it expecting a lot of fun and not a whole lot of substance. This one had a little bit of substance, so that's okay, but mostly it was for the flashy CGI and action sequences, which were really fun, really good. The turtles were in this movie a lot more, so that was a good thing. The action was entertaining, if not totally unrealistic, and in some cases stupid, which was irksome, but you could get past it because it's a Ninja Turtles movie, geared mostly for kids, but meant to be acceptable for people like you and me, who grew up on this stuff. So, I, I do give it some, some leeway, because it is meant to be more entertaining for the younger crowd, so... I'll give it some leeway, but you still have to consider that when reviewing the movie. It doesn't make it a good movie just because it's dumbed down for kids. Lots of the kids' movies like Toy Story are still good for adults. You get what I'm saying. So we had a lot of problems, but a lot of the things that it was trying to do, the action was really good, the CGI was phenomenal. There were only a couple of instances where I thought it looked iffy at all. And if you guys are familiar with CGI, which I imagine you are, you know realistic things like skin textures and things like that are really hard to fake. I mean, it's it, your human eye picks up on that and you don't, it doesn't look right. It looked really good in this movie. In comparison, the CGI in X-Men was trash. 
like even the, like they couldn't get container ships to look realistic or uh, containers like shipping containers to look realistic in that movie and in this movie the entire movie is filled with turtles and warthogs and realistic looking things that are believable it, it, they did a really good job with that the turtles looked even better than last time uh, I think and I haven't checked because it doesn't really matter but I think for Leo in particular they got his head shape to look more like the classic TMNT heads. Not the comic book ones, but kind of like those ones where they're all buff, like that series after the uh, the classic multicolored bandana series. He kind of looked like that more to me, which was awesome, and the voice change was really good too, so that was really good. The story was definitely good enough. You understood what everybody's motives were, if not for being told specifically. Uh, obviously, there were jumps in, in reason, like... Hey, do that because that is something you can do. And they'll, okay, I'll go do that. And like, there were some issues with that. Obviously, it's not the most fleshed out storyline. Not a lot of realistic things. So that does take points away from it. But still, the action's really, really fun. Tons of fan service. Tons of it, which was awesome for me. I was really happy. They even showed like the classic Ninja Turtle drawing for a second there. Uh, the music, some of the things they say, uh, just lots of things like that. If you're a Turtle fan, you will recognize these things and really appreciate it. Now, as far as the bad guys go, because the Turtles were the Turtles. It was pretty much more of the same from the first movie. If you liked them then, you'll like them now. There were some tweaks, so it, it could waver a little bit, but mostly it's, it's what you expected. Um, so let's talk about the bad guys. This time we have Bebop and Rocksteady. We saw them from the trailers, which a lot of people like them, a lot of people don't like them. I feel like it's in the middle for me. In, in this film, they didn't really add much. In fact, I liked them more before they got transformed. Um, but they were fine. They, they were as corny as they were in the cartoon. Uh, I don't know if it translated that well in the movie. But they were fine. They weren't really that impactful, though. They didn't really do much that... I don't know. I mean, they were there, but I feel like the scenes with the Foot Clan were better than the scenes with Bebop and Rocksteady. You guys can let me know what you think. And then we have Shredder, of course. You guys know Shredder's going to be in this because it's the Turtles. And so everybody was pretty upset with Shredder in the first movie. Big robot Shredder. Looks like a Transformer. What the heck? Now we, we get Shredder in this movie, and he's definitely more in line with the classic look. He's got kind of like a, an armored-up ninja-type outfit. Even at the, toward the end of the movie, he puts on a somewhat more traditional-looking helmet, which... It wasn't as traditional as I would have preferred, but it looked really good, so I was fine with that. It was weird, though, because when he put it on, his skin tone was still showing underneath, and then it, once he gets to that next scene, it's all black paint underneath to like go for the shadow look, which I guess they're paying homage to the completely blacked-out eyes of the old comic Shredder, but whatever. Um, then he's gone. Shredder does almost nothing other than drive the plot. He doesn't do much in this fight, or in this movie. There's no fight with Shredder. It was pretty disappointing. I, I was totally bummed out by that. And that this movie takes a big ding for that. Shredder was totally underutilized. Uh, we do have Krang, which I knew they were going to have Krang in this movie. And when he, he gets introduced very early on, so this isn't even really a spoiler. Uh, it's very much in line with the classic Krang with the big android body and him in the stomach. It's a little Michael Bay-esque. I mean, there's definitely way more going on than there, I think, needs to be. But it's acceptable. I thought it was cool, and the android looked sweet. I mean, it was definitely a unique look for him, but it was definitely recognizable, so I really liked that, and that is what the main fight is. The first movie, they fight Robot Terminator, Robot Terminator, Robot Shredder, I'll mention Terminator in a minute, that's why it's in my head. Uh, they'll fight Robot Shredder on the skyscraper in the first movie. In this movie, uh, they fight basically the android for Krang on top of what is essentially a, sky a skyscraper. It it's really not. It's a floating technodrome, which is odd, but technodromes in this kind of. Uh, they do make it look kind of like the technodrome, very iconic parts of it, but it's really underutilized again, like Shredder. So the fight scene at the end, not the best part of the movie. Very much like the first movie, it's a lot of stuff going on, not really much actually happening, and it's just kind of blah. It was cool, there were some really cool parts of it, but eh, underwhelming, I think. I think most of the fight scenes prior to that were a little more enjoyable, but still, it was good enough. And Krang was awesome, despite the issue, so that was a good thing. Um, before we get on to the Terminator reference, I want to talk about um, the human characters other than Splinter. We have Baxter Stockman, Casey Jones, April O'Neil. Baxter Stockman drives a plot, never really comes to fruition 
assuming what they set up happens, he's going to be in a future movie. Okay, but he doesn't transform or anything like that. So if you were expecting that, don't. He just drives the plot with Shredder, and then they're both just out of the movie because they have no more purpose, which was a bummer. Casey Jones. I'm a fan of Casey Jones. I think he was portrayed really well in the original live-action TMNT movie, which, by the way, this still doesn't compare to. Um, eh, Stephen Amell's okay. He's not the best actor. He doesn't really need to be for Casey Jones, but Casey Jones, as a character, didn't really fit. He didn't take anything away, but he just... They could have easily not put him in the movie, and obviously they had to tw tweak a few things, but he didn't really add anything. I didn't have that feel. Uh, I don't know, did you guys get the feels from Casey Jones in this? It just didn't work for me. It wasn't a bad thing, it wasn't a good thing, it was just a, eh, eh, it's, it's there, okay, I get it. So, that's that. April O'Neil, Megan Fox, um, say what you will about Megan Fox. Uh, she's good enough for the roles she plays, as far as acting goes, and she's still really good to look at, so I'm fine with her. I still like her. I thought she was really funny when she was on New Girl for a couple episodes, but that's beside the point. She was fine. She didn't hurt the film at all, and if you like looking at her because she's attractive, then she was still attractive in this. And if you think she's a great actress, then you will still think that, and you th if you think she's a crappy actress, you're still going to think that. This isn't the kind of movie where you're going to win awards. I don't think she would anyway, but it's not It's not that. The acting depth is not required for this movie, so I don't have a problem with her casting, or even Stephen Amell, because he's basically the same kind of actor. Not that deep, as far as we've seen so far. And Will Arnett, he's in it again, playing the same character. He has a couple of okay scenes and a couple of dumb scenes, and that's that. Nothing really special. Really, the focus was on the Turtles, and they did a really good job with that. The fighting was good. They had some nice conversations back and forth. CGI was phenomenal. Really happy about that. And the last thing I want to talk about was the musical score, which was, uh, it felt very much like Transformers. They played the same four or five notes, like that little hero note that they, if you guys seen the new, have seen the recent Transformers, you know what I'm talking about. They play that all the time. All the time, and it even sounds like the same Transformers music, so that got really old. And then at the very end, it might have even not started until the credits. It might have happened just before and then played into it, I'm not sure anymore. But the, the ending song, and I don't know if this was intentional or not, it sounds almost exactly like the music that played at the very end of uh, Terminator 2. Which was weird to me, not that it matters, because it was after the movie, but did anybody else notice that? You know the scene at the end of Terminator 2 where they're driving, they, like you can see the stripes of the road, and they're just it's just like panning down the road, and you hear that kind of, I don't even know how to describe the music, but you know what I'm talking about if you saw the movie. It was almost that same music, I think, unless I'm nuts. I just want to see if anybody else noticed that. So anyway, I'll stop rambling. The movie was what you expect. Uh assuming if you saw the first movie you expect this to be similar to that one it was very much like the first one it definitely wasn't a masterpiece of cinema in any way it had its fair share of of problems but what it did do right made up for it it was a lot of fun to watch so i recommend you see it if you're a turtles fan i i'm happy with it it, it didn't let me down like x-men did at all i i really enjoyed most of this movie and i think you guys will too so let me know what you thought about it in the comment sections below even if you haven't seen it if you want to talk about it you're welcome to talk about it with those of us who have thanks for watching guys make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already i have new videos every morning we do figure reviews custom figures movie reviews video game stuff tv stuff all kinds of stuff so make sure you subscribe if you haven't and in the meantime keep collecting